Hello and welcome to Tea Talk 101. I'm your host, Kennedy Monroe. On this week's episode, we talk about trans pride and what it means to you and me. We talk about the Stonewall Riots and Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera. We also discuss the new documentary Disclosure on Netflix and also talk about uh, my transition and my adult industry work. So, stay tuned right here as we dish the dirt this week on Tea Talk 101. So glad everybody's here today. Um, I got a lot of great feedback from episode one, so I appreciate it. I'm so glad that some of you have been um, talking about the show and some of my old people that used to watch the show are excited about the new show. So anyway, I want to say thank you and please share, like, comment wherever you're listening to this and let uh, everyone know how great it is. Anyway, I'm Kennedy Monroe. Um, In the last episode, we told you a little bit about the show, and um, we talked about trans women of color, and we talked about all that. So, I want to start off this episode by saying, Happy Pride. This is the last week of June, so it's uh, this past weekend, a lot of uh, things happened um, that were Pride. Um, a lot of Pride events would have happened this past weekend. I know New York City Pride would have happened this weekend. I know London Pride would have happened this weekend. There was a lot of them. I also think um, Houston Pride was supposed to happen this weekend, which is where I live. Um, so uh, a lot of different things happened instead. So um, I just want to say pr- Happy Pride to everybody. And a lot of people, we talk about LGBTQ and on my TikTok, I started at the beginning of the month doing um, trans pride. And someone asked me, why are you doing just trans pride? Because trans is included in pride. And um, I will say that a lot of times, a lot of people, a lot of trans people, and I know for um, myself is that a lot of times we feel like the T is silent when we talk about pride. Uh, A lot of things um, are not geared towards trans people or we're excluded from the narrative. And um, so uh, that is why I focus on trans pride because I want trans and non-conforming individuals to know that um, Pride should be for everyone in that spectrum. And as being a trans woman, um, I just want to celebrate that. And that's what this show's about. Even though this show has featured a lot of queer people on it, not just trans. I mean, my co-hosts, some of them weren't even trans. I've had drag queens. I've had... it. We, I have no issue um, with having guests who are not trans or... Um, co-hosts that are not trans in the past so this has nothing issue so if you're watching my show on youtube this is recorded on youtube so you can see the video so if you're watching a little thing is is that um i do my show in on my bed and i live in an rv me and my husband live in an rv right now because we were in the middle of three years ago building a house on my grandparents property and my grandpa was going to help so we started building it, and um, he had heart problems, and we had to stop building it, and money, we put a lot of money into it, so basically, if if you see my house right now, it's just a shell, and it's a storage place for all my drag and a lot of our stuff, because we live in an RV right now. We live on my grandparents' property, uh, I take care of my grandparents' Uh, we will be their caregivers when they get, um, ill. Uh, so, we are here on the property. It's 1.5 acres. It's where 
I grew up. <laughs> That's why I'm back here. Uh, my grandparents mean a lot to me. And, uh, they they practically raised me. They've given me things. They were the first people to really accept me when I came out as trans and gay and all those different things. So, um, I'm <laughs> my husband gets frustrated with them sometimes because they're still so Republican and so conservative. But my grandma is slowly breaking my grandpa on the other hand. He's just hard-headed. And I have to tell him. They grew up in a whole different generation. Uh, they're the type of people that will say, we are not racist, we have black friends. And I have to tell them that's still being racist. But they're slowly coming around, and because of the pandemic, we go out and do a lot of their shopping and do a lot of things for them. So, um, anyway, so I we live in an RV, and it's tiny, and we do have five dogs that we adopted. So if you look at my TikTok, you'll see my dogs. I love my babies to death. And just... The, people think it's crazy. Five dogs in an RV. But it works. We have a lot of property to go out and run. Some of them are outside. Some of them are inside right now. Um, but... The house. Back to the house. Do I want to... We're trying to finish building it. We've put money in. Savings. But it's... It's hard for me and my husband to finish it by ourselves, and then we have to hire someone. So it's a, it's a big ordeal. So I don't know what's going to happen right now, but I know I can't do another year in an RV. I used to want a tiny house, and after living in an RV, I'm like, no, I can't do a tiny house. So we've been looking at um, mobile homes, modular homes. They look like houses. They don't look like mobile homes. I grew up in a trailer, so I... I this is nothing like that. And, um, there's one we really like. And so I'm hoping maybe we get it. And then the house frame that we built, we pl we're planning to turn it upstairs would be my studio, um, where I make a lot of things. I used to paint, um, I haven't painted in a while, but I used to love painting. Um, I have a cricket. I sew. So it'd be like my studio to do everything, photography. All those kind of things. So, and then the bottom story would be my husband's like workshop because he went to welding school and he likes building things, and that would be his area. So, the house wouldn't go to waste; it would be a place that's used. Um, but anyway, um, back to uh, Pride, as it being Pride right now. Um, Pride started off as a riot, and a lot of people are starting to hear that for the first time. And um, there's this movie that I love to death um, called Stonewall. I gotta see, see where I put it. So, called Stonewall. So if you're watching the video, you can see it on film. The movie cover I have, Stonewall. And it stars um, someone that you may recognize. Um, Guillermo from... Um, Guillermo Diaz from uh, 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 Scandal. And he was in Weeds. He was in a lot of other things. Um, he's He plays the lead in the movie that's a drag queen. So Stonewall is a... A movie. Fictionalized version of... Of Stonewall, the riots, the whole—it's it's a, it's a fictionalized love story, and um, it has real footage from the news at that time and what was going on, but also intertwined with this love story and about these DQs, as they're called in the movie. Um, I have a feeling like the lead is kind of like Sylvia Rivera. And then Marsha P. is one of the other DQs in the movie. And so, it's it's a great story. And it's from the 1995 version, not the 2000 and something version that was whitewashed. Um, it's just really good. It's a really good movie. And it will help you understand 
that time period, even though it was uh, it's a fictionalized version, um, it still takes you to that time and gives you an understanding of what happened. And so when you watch the movie and you see the DQs and especially the lead, um, they have an issue with their identity and um, and it makes you believe, makes you see that. Back then, there was no language for trans. There was no transgender word. There was, they called themselves DQs. So, a lot of the drag queens were trans women, if if they were in today's society. So they would fall under trans. And um, Marsha P. When you hear everything about Marsha P. Um, Johnson, which is from the gay liberation activist, self-identified drag queen, known as the outspoken advocate for gay rights. Johnson was one of the prominent figures in the Stonewall Uprising of 1969. A founding member of the Gay Liberation Front, Johnson co-founded the radical activist group Street Transvestite Action Revolutionaries, which is star, alongside close friend Sylvia Rivera. So transvestite was a word back then so um and so today when you say you have your rights because of trans women of color it's because of these two women um so so i love that right now that we're in a time that we're in because we're not having a party for pride we're having it's more of an educational pride so it makes it even more special in a sense and um so, uh, the movie Stonewall, go get it. The only way I've gotten it is for like 10 bucks on uh, Amazon. I got the DVD. It's like my third one now because I watch them or mess them up and I love them so much. So, go get it if you want it. Get it. It's a good movie. That is that. So, um, this episode I wanted to talk about um, this documentary I watched on Netflix this past week called Disclosure. If you have not seen it, please watch it. Especially if you're a trans person. It made me cry. Um, and why I, why it really made me cry is... When I was in high school, I was really a huge part of... the uh, Theater saved me. Theater saved my life. It saved... It created a lot of who I am today. And I went to college for theater. And I dropped out because... I wanted to act, but I was too effeminate to be in any real roles. I always got typecast into the old person or the comedy person. I never, man, I never got really, in college I got tight, I got put into a chorus line and do a monologue of the gay guy. So, um, I always thought, oh, I'll never be able to act because I'm trans. And then I started doing drag. And drag was like my acting part because I got to be on stage. I felt um, whole on stage performing. And then you had to go through all that that kind of stuff too because you had to deal with growing up in drag and finding yourself in drag and also trying to work on stages and being allowed a stage to express your your artistic style and then you get put into categories and so what I liked about this documentary disclosure was is that you got to see trans people uh, on through media through the start of TV and how trans people were depicted as basically the butt of the joke and a lot of things and that's the sad part and, but then you see people now who are like Laverne Cox and Candace Kane and um, the girls of Pose, and you see so many trans men in amazing roles on TV. And you, I think, oh, I wish it was me because I wanted to be an actor for so long. So, in a lot of ways, it made me cry because. I always thought I could never be an actor, and now you watch these things 
like this, this documentary disclosure, and you, you see it can be possible, and why trans people playing trans people in media is very important, but it, it's also important for trans people to play normal he, uh, cis hetero, and I'm not saying normal in the sense that it's different, but I'm saying society's version, they need to see trans people playing cis roles, and 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 what how it can be done and um i just watched that documentary and i thought oh my god it made me happy it made me really see that the world is changing and to think if i would have had this when i was younger maybe the choices I made or the things that I did would have allowed me to do those sort of things. And so, like, when I turned 30, I got into the adult industry. And for so long, uh, they used to contact me after I was, like, 20-something. I was on the cover of a couple of magazines. I was on the cover of Ladylike magazine. I had a column in a lot of trans magazines where I basically wrote about um, my transition and stuff like that. And the porn companies kept contacting me and wanted to sh me to shoot for them. And I always told them no. I n swore I would never do porn. Um, I would never do porn and I would never escort. Well, I did both of those. And I don't regret them. Uh... It's just how the, it's how the cookie crumble, cookie crumbles, I guess you could say, or how the, the roll of the dice went for me. When I was 30, um, my girlfriend was escorting. She made it look glamorous. She was making lots of money. I said, ooh, even though I had other friends who had been escorting years before, and I always said no. But then I saw it again, and it just like I was at a, I was at a crossroads in my life. I was thirty, um, I, I was in a lot of ways broke. Uh, I wasn't happy. Um, I was in a relationship, and it was good. We were, but it, it, it just was like money was always an issue. So um, I started escorting. Then um, I was asked again if I would do porn and I said yes and the reason I said yes was because I thought oh it give me exposure to um escort escort so I'd get more, more money and make more money to make more, more money and I've been moved to LA, LA and, and uh, I, I um, um was the, the first host of, of, of the tranny awards I was the second I was the first of like um I guess real hosts, they had other awards. It was like the second or third tranny awards. But um, I was the first. They did the awards in person. It was the second year they did it in person. But I was the first real host. Um, I moved out to L.A. That was the first time I was really exposed around um, trans women in the industry. And we grew a bond. And um, this was 2011. So I hosted that. It was fun. Um, then I did a lot of things like hosting backstage, the winner's circle, and doing interviews. And oh my God, there's so many things. <laughs> so I lived in LA for almost a year, ended up homeless. Me and my partner and my two dogs were living on the streets at one point or living in hotels. I was sex working working for sometimes 60 bucks uh, I would do whatever just to pay the hotel room which was a roach hotel room um, I remember one hotel room was above the office of this hotel and the floor was probably eventually going to cave through I mean it was just gross cockroaches everything um, and then my porn career was doing good the issue with that was is that I was told I was too fat that I would never sell DVDs and so I embraced that no mentality 
and um, started producing my own DVDs, made me popular. Then I started getting I started getting award nominations and won awards, and I was doing this all this stuff by myself, becoming a basically a boss bitch. I would say um, the adult industry is run by cis old white men, and um, so for you to go outside of the box and do every, stuff so different was was crazy and um I was doing it and I was learning and I was I was just doing my own thing but a lot of people think because I was in the adult industry that I made lots of money and I made no not lots of money my movies are still out there and I'm not making lots of money <laughs> um I retired in 2018 um my last movie was released in I think to the beginning of 2019 maybe it was 2018 I can't remember now but anyway it was my last movie and um, I don't I don't miss it uh, at all I had fun I did a lot of wonderful things I was the first trans woman in mainstream trans porn that was featuring trans men in majority of her movies at one time I just I started doing Trans Men Adventures 1, 2, and 3, and um, they were in my movies I did, and then we did, all my stuff was groundbreaking, I was the first, I, my trans men that I featured in my movies got also got nominated for Avian Awards, that was the first time that happened since Buck Angel, so a lot of things happened, I was, I was a pioneer in the sense that um, gay companies were asking me how to promote a trans man in their films and they're wanting to do this stuff and and I had this awesome um, distribution deal and movies were supposed to be getting put in Germany and all this stuff and I signed a p deal for Germany where my movies would be subtitled and um, not subtitled, dubbed over and I thought that was the coolest thing and then about six months after that, the company closed down. I never made money off any of my DVDs that they sold. Um, and I don't even know if my DVDs made it to Germany and were dubbed over. And I lost that money too. I don't know. I have no idea. But um, after that, it put a sour taste in my mouth with the industry and how white old cis men run it still. And I had to just let it go. I had to stop and move on and my partner had passed away in 2014 we were together eight years he had passed away due to alcoholism he was an addict and his liver was gone his liver was shot that's not really how he died he died because he fell after having s surgery with his liver he got out for a week fell hit his head had brain surgery all that stuff and just in a month I lost my partner. Uh, I thought my world was going to end. So a few months after he passed, he passed in September 2014. I moved back to Texas to be with my family. We moved in with my mom. Still trying to run my adult career. Um, dated a few trans men uh, after him. Met my husband. He was cast in uh, Transmit Adventures 3. And um, we've, been a, a, we've been inseparable since. He's changed my life, and I'm so happy. Uh, so I'm married to a trans man legally. We are a straight couple if you really want to go down that road because he was born a girl and I was born a boy. And... He's now living as a boy, trans man, and I'm living as a woman. So, we're a heterosexual couple. <laughs> but, uh, I love him to death. And, um, there's days I know he wants to kill me. And there's days I probably want to kill him, but, um, we rarely ever fight. And it, it's a good relationship, and it, it makes me happy. So, um. Uh, 
all those things happen. And I look at life and I think that um, things happen for a reason. In my 20s, I was wild and crazy and I said, no, I can't be in porn. Then in my 30s, I had a, like a midlife crisis and needed attention and I needed someone to say, oh, you're beautiful and want to have sex with me. So I was like using my body to get what I needed. And in a lot of ways, it was unhealthy, but it was also healthy because it also made me um, really appreciate myself, my trans body, and look in the mirror and go, I like the way I look and how I've chosen to live my life. And, of course, if it wasn't for porn, would I ever have really ever considered my sexuality? Because in porn, I also found a lot of things, my attraction to women in some sense. Um, it was the first time I ever had sex with a, a cis woman on film. Was, uh, uh, um, so then, and then going down the road having sex with trans men and really never being a part of that anatomy really opened my eyes. So I'm proud of the adult work that I've done because if it wasn't for the adult industry, the things that I've found within myself would have never happened. And a lot of people, I always wonder why um, the queer, trans people or anybody go, oh, you did porn. That's gross. That's horrible. But we all look at porn. And... And we downplay people that escort or trans women that escort because but that's sometimes the only outlet that they can have. It's the only job they can get. And it's it's sad. But it's true. And that's how it really works. As in um So, the next time you think about shaming someone for doing adult work, you also have to think about why they're doing adult work. And, you know, check in on them. If you have friends that do adult work, just check on them. Make sure they're okay. A lot of times we put on a facade and we, we, we let the whole world think we're okay and mentally we're drained and we're... And that was what was happening to me. At the end of my adult career, I was drained. I did not want to have sex with anybody. I didn't want to be around anybody. I, didn't, I was just drained. Um, it takes a toll on you. I had a lot of things happen to me. Escorting. I was raped. I was had a gun put to my head. I had um, to survive. And a lot of times I think to myself, if I wasn't a white trans woman... Would it be a survive today? Because some of those incidents, I probably could have been murdered. And then you think about all the trans women of color who are murdered on a regular basis in America for being trans. And it's just, oh, it just kills me. It just, you know, when I told my grandma that I was trans going back to disclosure. Let's go back to disclosure. When I told her I was the first time I told her I was going to be trans, the only time she ever seen a trans woman on TV was in Law and & Order, and she was a dead prostitute. My grandma always thought I was going to die. I was living in Chicago at the time, and she would call me and go, she would just call me out of blue because she saw an episode of Law and & Order where a trans woman was murdered, and she would go, are you okay? Like, it was me in that show. And she had to check on me. And the sad part is that's the only example my grandmother ever had of a trans woman. Before I transitioned, I let my grandma meet a trans woman for the first time. We happened to run into a friend of mine going to the movies. I said, oh my god, grandma, this is, this is my friend so-and-so. And y'all have the same name. And they talked and all this stuff. And then when they... Say we got back in the car. I said, you know, she was born a man. That's a trans woman. It was putting seeds into my grandma at the time. But still, my grandma had only ever seen a trans woman murdered on TV in some of her favorite shows. So for her, 
she always worried that I would be one of those girls in those shows. So it's so nice and refreshing to see so many documentaries of trans women or documentaries of trans people or um, TV shows that depict trans people in everyday society, living their life, their authentic self, but also seeing trans people playing cis roles and to know that it's possible for anybody, all these trans youth coming up, that it's possible for them to have a whole different life than what I had. Um, I transitioned in 2000. I started taking hormones and doing a lot of things. And we didn't have the internet like we have now. We had the internet, but it was not the same. You couldn't Google things. Um, my hormones came from other trans women sometimes that got them. Uh, I would buy or we would buy from a website online and all this stuff we would do and um I remember trying to get um breast implants in Chicago went to um a doctor they quoted me a price then when they found out that I was trans they doubled that price and so I wanted breasts so bad that I went and got pumps with silicone five different times in a apartment on the south side of Chicago. And so I see a lot of my friends now who have silicone pumps and they're having complications and they're having silicone removal or they're having silicone poisoning and they're having to have surgeries and having double mastectomies. And I think my day is going to come that it's going to happen to me. And so I wanted to be that woman for so long that I risked my life to get something just to be who I wanted to be. For me, having breasts was my gender confirming surgery. That was who made me, that's what made me a woman. That's what made me feel whole. And I risked my life to get that. And now, the older I get, that's going to um, hinder me. And I know that. So, um, I'm so glad that trans people now have so many accesses to health care and... Um, doctors and insurance that allows them to get things. I mean, my husband got his top surgery because of my insurance from work, and we only had to pay $500 out of pocket, and I'm so glad that I could get him that. So, as we are coming to the end of Pride Month, we have to sometimes, as LGBTQ people think about the T in the pride and why it matters so much and why um, trans people need to be proud of their history and learn from their elders and even hearing people like me tell my story. Yes, I'm not Laverne Cox and I'm not Angelica Ross or um, any of the girls on TV. I'm just a everyday trans woman who happened to have an adult career who changed a lot of things in the adult industry for trans people. Um, I'm still just a normal person. I live in Harvey for God's sakes um, and take care of my grandparents and I had a lady tell I had a trans woman tell me that um, I'm an icon and I'm a legend on TikTok. And it made me smile. Because maybe I never heard that. And then I did, I did, um, I did a, a podcast called Feast of uh, Fun, which is the co podcast I had been on regularly. And I told my story and talked about everything just earlier this year. And you can listen to it on my website at KennedyMonroe.com. There's a sec, go down to the, my blog and you'll see the 
Feast of Fun, my return, and you can listen to that podcast where I talk about a lot of things. And um, they basically call me an icon too, and I'm a trans legend. And and you can't think like that. Like I can't, because I'm still living, and I'm gonna be forty in August. So it's like you can't think. I I can't grasp that yet. But I've. But then when you like sit there and you talk to other people and you start telling your story and you start telling all these things that happened and all these things that you did. Like I was putting out dance music before all these drag queens on RuPaul's Drag Race. I was doing that. I was using lingo like what you see in Pose and all this lingo that we use. Um, I was doing that in my songs before it was popular to do. Before it was on period. <laughs> And I had to ask someone what that meant. On period. That tells you how old I am. On period. What's that? I had to question it. But I have a song called Sickening. So I can't talk. Because some people want to know what sickening means. Especially in the cis world. But I just wanted you to know. I was doing things when other people weren't doing things. This podcast was doing things before podcasting trans people were even podcasting we were podcasting we were doing a video podcast our stuff was on youtube our stuff was on everything we were taking cameras into clubs and into bars and just doing crazy shit we were taking a camera on the bus in chicago or the train in chicago we were documenting our things we were doing things that other people weren't doing me and reyna and you think about that. You think about we've come a long way. And so when someone says to you, you're an icon, you're a legend, you're valid. It It's special to me, and especially when it's coming from another trans person. Because that is why I've always documented or always wrote or always talked about my life. Because I always wanted someone else to see me. And say it's okay for them. Even in the adult industry. I wanted people to see someone like me. And go oh. You're doing it. I can do it. Or I can accept my body. Because you accept your body. And so those are the things. Those are the things that make me happy. When I hear stories of people saying thank you. Because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have been able to accept myself or my body or all those things. I made, you made me valid. And that's why for so long, I've always put myself out there. I tried to live stealth. (laughs) I tried it. I think I did it maybe a year, if that. Oh, no. I couldn't live stealth. And there's a lady in, I can't remember her name right now, but there's a lady in Disclosure who was an actor. And you've, you've seen her and stuff. And you wouldn't even know she was trans. She lived stealth. She just recently came out in the last few years. And you, and you, she was in she Cheetah, was in Cheetah Girls. Girls. Um, um, and, and you go, oh my god, she's, she's trans. trans. She lived this she lived secret, secret life for so long. So long. Oh, like, I could have never done that. I could have never done that. So, so, as we as end we Pride Month, Pride Month, don't forget yeah. Pride. Um, I will tell trans people, live prideful every day. Find something that you're proud about yourself. And don't use it as just one month a year to s- talk about your pride. And talk about who you are. And... And um, I'm proud of who I am every day, even when I'm at the lowest point of my life and that I've been at. There's some way I've been proud of what I've done and where I'm going. So, with parting words for this episode, I want anybody who's listening to this to remember that um, life is precious. You only get to live it once. So live it to your best. Because I know in my 40 years, I've lived it to my best. There may be some crazy ass moments. 
and I've had rock hard bottoms, but life, I've lived my best life. So if tomorrow I was to die, I would be proud of what I've done. And that's what you gotta do. You gotta do it every day. Live proud. Be who you are. There's people transitioning and they're, they're finding themselves later in life. And that is beautiful. It is beautiful. Um, I hope that I can continue to give that validation to someone who's watching or listening to any of my videos or movies or anything to know that you are valid you are loved and you are beautiful don't let anybody take that away from you you are beautiful you are valid you are loved and so when you think about pride, think about your trans elders. Ask questions if you're younger. Find out things. Learn something new. Um, watch a movie like Stonewall. Or a documentary like Disclosure. And just open your hearts and your minds to how beautiful the world has changed and we still got a long way to go and we got to fight and we got to we got to resist and we got to do a lot of things but just know in 20 years a lot's changed i've seen a lot change and i'm proud of it and i can't wait to see what happens in the next 20 years for trans people um but thank you all for listening um I hope you tune in next Tuesday as we talk about something totally different. I have no idea what we're going to talk about, but we're going to talk about something. And um, make sure that wherever you hear this podcast, that you like it, that you subscribe to it, that you um, leave a comment, because that helps a lot. And um, you can find me on anywhere on my website at kennedymonroe.com. Go to kennedymonroe.com. You can listen to this podcast there anytime you want. You can um, get all my social media links. Uh, you can Google Kennedy Monroe. It's K-E-N-N-I-D-I. Um, and a lot of things pop up on Google now. It's very special. Even my music pops up on Google. So it's just, it's so special. So um, go to kennedymonroe.com to find out more information about me or um, get any of my videos, find out my YouTube channel. If you're watching from my YouTube channel, all my links are usually put in my um, description. So, um, anyway. Thank you all for listening. Um, if there's anything you ever want me to talk about or you want to hear about, please feel free. Drop me an email. You can always drop me an email on my website. Of course, you can always leave me a message on my website. Um, or you can go to km at kennedymonroe.com and email me. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. And make sure you please share this and like it and tell all your friends. Tea Talk is back. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. And I will see you next Tuesday right here on Tea Talk 101.